This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good to be with you all on this Christ the King Sunday. And for the welcome and announcements, welcome to our folks and video land. Glad that you can join us as well. And uh, I have to start with the biggest news we've had in years. Um, it seems to me there's a local high school football team that might have won a game last night, somewhere around 31 to 7. So congratulations to our Cary Blue Devil football team as they advance yet again in the tournament. So uh, pretty neat stuff. And uh, we'll uh, certainly continue to root for them. Oh, there was also a team from the Columbus area, I hear they might have met with some success yesterday as well. Oh, I just looked up to see, did Denise Dennis sneak in? I didn't want to offend her. <laughs> and and the, the um, Kershaw ladies were kind enough to give my mother-in-law a uh, Kershaw and ask me to pick one. And I thought, yeah, mom's got a fair bit of green. So I picked a green and white one. We, we hid that yesterday. <laughs> it reminds me when I get home, we can, we can do that for her as well. Also, I wanted to let you know, today is the last day to order uh, Christmas poinsettias. Um, we've uh, had a good response. And uh, hopefully we can do that. But Liz, you're the one kind of coordinating this. They are due tomorrow. Okay, so before you leave today, I've got it all up until today in my computer. And I'll uh, make sure you get a copy of that. Okay, other than that, that's the news I have for you. Does anyone have anything to share? of the congregation now would be a good time to make mention all right as i said it's christ the king sunday so let's take a moment and prepare ourselves to worship the lord Thank you. 
I invite you to stand and join with me for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our Comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sins, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yet by the grace of God in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive the glad, we receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. And now we sing our opening hymn.
Glory be to God on high. Glory be to the Father who makes us. Glory be to God with us. Glory to the Son who makes us free. Glory be to God in us. Glory to the Spirit who makes us one. Let us join our hearts and our voices together in the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be high priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Last Sunday I spoke about apocalyptic literature, and on this Christ the King Sunday we have another reading from the book of Daniel, an Old Testament apocalyptic, and um, this, uh, this particular Sunday Listen as Daniel envisions the, uh, the future and what it holds. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and his wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousands stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. <coughs> Pardon me. As I watched the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Maybe I sang that first hymn too hard. <laughs> Our second reading is from a New Testament apocalyptic called Revelation. John of Patmos wrote this. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sin by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I invite you to stand for the Gospel reading. <clears throat> and our Holy Gospel for this Christ the King Sunday, according to St. John the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Pilate entered the headquarters, again, he summoned Jesus, and he asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? 
Then Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? And Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? But Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. I let that ask him. So you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In the news lately, there has been a bit of a, uh, a thing happening across the puddle as uh, the Queen has been having some health issues added and coupled to her age, as spry as she may be. Nevertheless, the end is near. And at such time, of course, England again will have a king. Monarchs in this day and age are not something that we're very familiar with. It was one of those sorts of things that it set up our pattern of democracy and our form of government, though sometimes it too can be flawed. You see, that's what we deal with when we start working in, in any areas where we start to confuse that which is of the spirit and that which is of the flesh. That's what's going on as we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. We have trouble connecting to it. I remember going back, oh, probably close to 20 years when I was in high school, and uh, that was my first introduction to a, uh, a, a light opera. Now, mind you, I'm not a fan of opera, and not to offend anyone who might be, but Giancarlo Minotti wrote a piece called A Mall in the Night Visitors. It's a light opera, and over the years, it's been my privilege, not only back in high school, but over the years to have done this light opera at least six times. Usually it comes in the season of Epiphany. Uh, oftentimes it's remembered and shown around Christmas time. And I'm not, not trying to rush the seasons. Let's get through Thanksgiving this Thursday before we head toward Christmas. But in this, this piece, Among the Night Visitors, Amal, the main character, is a, a young child, quite precocious. He is the child of a widowed woman, and he has a handicap. And so he has to walk with a crutch. Well, as without giving you the whole uh, uh, scenario, as it turns out, in the process of time, the three kings, the Magi, on their way to visit the Christ child, come across this village wherein lies Amal and his mother. And they come in, and they knock on the door, and it's a wonderful little story. And by the way, if you're not an opera fan, I get that. The good news is, it's all in English. And so you don't have to have a translation or anything else. But being a precocious young child, the mother says, Amal, I'm going out to get the villagers and ask them to bring whatever they have in the house 
because we have nothing to offer these three important visitors. And Amal, don't be a nuisance. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you can imagine what happens. So his mother is out of the house. Here comes Amal. And he goes up to the first king and he says, Are you a real king? And Balthazar says, Yes. Actually sings it, I'm not going to do that to you. And he says, Have you regal blood? And Balthazar says, Yes. And Maul says, Can I see it? And Balthazar says, it is just like yours. What's the use of having it then? No use. And then it goes on with more of an exchange. And of course, Amal does this with all of the kings over the course of this piece. No use. It's just, you know, for these earthly kings, their regal blood has everything to do with flesh and not spirit. And that's the whole point of Christ the King Sunday. In the book of Revelation, there is this, this wonderful scenario, but behold, he's coming with clouds. He is coming again. This time of year when we wrap up our, our cycle of Mark's gospel predominantly, this cycle B, next Sunday we launch into cycle C, which means we'll use Luke as a predominant gospel throughout the year. And so it's a transition Sunday out of one season into the next. And the emphasis of all three of the readings today is that aspect as we celebrate Christ as King that makes a difference. Have you regal blood? Yep, and it's just like yours. What is the use of having it then? For Balthazar, no use. If you and I had the chance to ask Jesus, what is the use of having it then? Jesus would respond for you. That's what makes the difference. The difference is that it is not just Christ with us, but it is Christ for us. That one who was, who is, and who is to come is that one who gives himself to us so fully and completely that we uphold him as our king. Not as we would for political purposes in an earthly kingdom, but out of faith, a spiritual one. It isn't our faith that makes Christ king. It is the kingship of Christ that makes us believe. Unlike all of our earthly relationships, Jesus proves himself in humility. Christ, the victor, that one who, who is, who was, and who will be, the one who is yet to come, is the one that we celebrate on this day. Now, to pro portray Christ as king certainly doesn't mean that we think of him, you know, as, as up in the sky and controlling the world by invisible strings or, or undetectable ray guns, if I want to bring it up to, to pace today, or anything like that. To speak of Christ as king is a matter of faith. To speak of Christ <coughs> is that often the hard facts about our world seem to deny our faith's picture of Christ as King. If we look around, if we look around our world today, hate sometimes seems stronger than love. 
Look around the globe. Look here in our own country. Conflict is more prevalent than peace. Lies all too often win out over truth. The tag phrase that Pilate asks at the end of the gospel reading, that I didn't share today, but I have in other years, is when Jesus says, I'm here to testify to the truth. And Pilate says, what is truth? What is truth? The Bible readings point us beyond this world. And it is toward that world of faith. Christ, our King, has made himself one of us, but made himself one of us with a purpose. Christ is not only King, but he's our friend. He's our, our brother. He's the one we turn to in love. He's the one that we feel em em empowered and empowered to serve. Not because of his majesty in any earthly terms, but out of that marvelous gift of faith implanted in your heart. Whatever suffering our king permits or decrees for us, this king, Christ the king, suffers right along with us. In faith, we can see beyond the conflict and the lies and all of the pain and look toward Christ, our king. Sometime, in some way, we know in our hearts and believe through the gift of faith, that gift of grace, that we can see that our king, this king in the end, will work everything out for the good. In some way, at some time, we can hope that all of the evil and destruction will be completely subdued. And we at once can know the power of that truth, that truth that Pilate couldn't see. That truth that only Daniel could envision while his nation was in conflict. That the writer of Revelation could see as the final victory over evil, sin, death, and the grave. So when we celebrate Christ Jesus as our King, we celebrate life, life for us today through faith, life for all of us to die in hope, and life to be lived throughout all eternity. This is Christ, your King. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join in the hymn of today.
that they would experience the love of Jesus and that he might be for them agents of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those traveling this week and for, for those gathered with family and friends, for protection from inclement weather and for the body of Christ gathered here, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent your Son, Jesus, to be our beginning and our ending, our Alpha and our Omega. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O gracious God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 